Okay, so it is Illuminostic, and I am here with Eric, who is one of the guests at our Jungle Gnosis retreats, uh, and he suffers from epilepsy, or... Suffered. Suffered, I guess. Uh, at least that's how it appears. And I have heard um, through the grapevine uh, from various shamans and whatnot that people sometimes experience remission from epilepsy permanently uh, after drinking ayahuasca. Uh, there are anecdotal reports online that suggest that it's true and so um i had some hope that it would help uh eric and it appears that it may have actually cured him so i wanted to offer that to you guys and let eric tell his story because uh obviously it could help a lot of people um also eric struggled with drug addiction for a long time we're going to talk a little bit about kratom and how that helped him kind of just walk right out of that without having to go through horrendous withdrawals and kind of get his life back and maybe a little bit about his experience in general here at Jungle Gnosis in the Ecuadorian rainforest. Hmm. So, uh, maybe even getting whipped with Ortiga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so yeah, so I guess you, you, were, you were telling me that you were still taking your medication uh, and still having seizures. Yeah, so um, basically I've had um, problems with drug addiction for... 12 years at least and um, epilepsy for longer than that um, and before coming here just in case anyone feels like saying oh it was the drugs causing the seizures I was actually clean for about four or five months before coming here and <clears throat> there's not really a significant correlation I mean there was I'm, I'm definitely perfectly capable of provoking a seizure with uh, um, taking the right or the wrong drugs but um, I had been here for, I had been clean for about four or five months before coming here. I will, except for uh, everything besides Kratom, nicotine, and my seizure medications, which were Levature Acetam, 1000 milligrams, morning and night, and Lamotrigine, 200 milligrams, also morning and night. And so I actually had, the last two seizures I had were on um, the 1st or 2nd of April in Quito, Ecuador. Um, after we had met with you and I was still taking my medications at the time Because um, they they help they definitely reduce the severity and the intensity of the seizures or the frequency and the intensity of the seizures, but They they're not a cure-all um, and even other things like CBD and um, Regular marijuana, which I really don't enjoy smoking those Really they really only help to a, a negligible extent at least in my case um, but as soon as we got to the retreat here, um, before even uh, I think we had drank ayahuasca the first time, you uh, you prepared this tea, which I will let you list the ingredients because I don't remember them. But um, between that between that tea and the ayahuasca, I was actually able to quit my se my seizure medications cold turkey. Um, and as a disclaimer, Harley actually told me not to do this when I came here um, because. Just like any other drug, when you quit your seizure medications, the withdrawals um, tend to be the opposite of the effects of the drugs, which in this case would be the suppressant of seizures. And and I know that to be the case. I've tried stopping my those medications before, and the seizures just go into overdrive. But living here, um, drinking these uh, medicinal teas and ayahuasca, um, along with eating much, much better and sweating out God knows how many different toxins, um, I was able to stop both of my seizure medications, which I was close to the maximum dose of for both of them, and had been on them for four or five years. Um, I was able to stop completely, and I have not had a seizure since those two that I had uh, when I was in keto and still on the medications. And, I'll and one more thing. Okay. Uh, not only have I not had any seizures, but um, ordinarily I'm actually... I'm not able to tell when I'm going to have a seizure, but I can tell when I'm prone to having a seizure uh, because uh, my body jerks in all different places and there's a very specific feeling in my brain that um, I think you just kind of have to experience it. I, I call them brain blinks because it feels like your brain's blinking. Brain blinks. Yeah, uh, but those are also completely gone. And not only that, but one thing that really makes me prone to feeling those symptoms and that can push those symptoms into full-blown seizures is coffee which I've actually drank coffee the past two days, and it feels nothing. I'm there, Almost every single symptom of my epilepsy appears to have vanished. Yeah, and so um, the uh, 
tea that he referenced, there are a couple of components that are the likely culprits, um, the constituents that, uh, well, actually there are three that I suspect the most strongly. Um, the tea contains ajo de monte, which is basically uh, Spanish for wild garlic, uh, and it is a plant that's used for spiritual cleansing, dietas uh, to combat headaches, and to treat epilepsy. Um, and interestingly, a shaman once told me that the way that they can cure epilepsy with ayahuasca is to give someone a shot of ayahuasca and a shot of garlic, which they say stops the ayahuasca. And then as soon as the person vomits and comes down, they give them another shot of ayahuasca. And then as soon as the ayahuasca starts again, they give them another shot of garlic and they repeat this over and over and over again. So the correlation, of course, is that the um, aurimante smells like garlic. It has the same terpenoids or terpenes in uh, the plant that garlic does. Um, and so I thought that was interesting that there's this uh, sort of continuity with the uh, alkaloids in the, in the plants, or at least the smells um, of the plants and their applications for epilepsy. And then there's also psilocybin. Uh, it's not enough to make the tea like strongly psychoactive, but the, the, it's suspected that the reason that epilepsy uh, causes seizures is that the two hemispheres of the brain are not communicating properly and so psilocybin, ayahuasca uh, as well, LSD even uh, allows the two hemispheres to communicate much greater than normal. And so it may be true that Eric will have to continue to microdose psilocybin, we're not really sure, the ajo de monte could have cured it, the ayahuasca could have cured it. Um, but those are the main elements in the tea that I think would have possibly contributed to this aside from ayahuasca. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about the vision you had where the, um, spirit removed the discs from your Yeah, head? yeah, yeah. Um, no, the discs removed whatever. So anyway, um, we, I'll, I'll start with, um, going to Mama Celia's, um, shack. So, uh, um, for anyone that hasn't checked out the video of Mama Celia, definitely do that. Uh, we'll go into that now, but she's like the 70-year-old shamana who um, we went to do ayahuasca with. Uh, she actually said that there has some kind of vapor treatment for uh, epilepsy, and we we kind of are wondering if she just intuited that that wouldn't be necessary anymore because she completely uh, dropped off the face of the earth, it seems like. Uh, we weren't able to get a hold of her. But um, when we went to her place to do ayahuasca, she was... A analyzing me, I guess, and she said, "Yeah, your your mind is very blocked," and <clears throat> and I didn't really get any more details than that. But um, every night after that, that I did ayahuasca, I asked the medicine to help remove this block. For like three or four ceremonies at least, nothing nothing super productive really happened. But um, one night, and this was actually the, the one night that I threw up the medicine immediately. Um, I didn't even have it down for five minutes. Yeah, we're talking like three minutes. If, if that, yeah. yeah. And this was actually the strongest experience I've had so far. Um, but as the vision started, um, I, uh, I saw what I, I can best describe as, as a cherubim, which if you don't know what that is, it's these angels from the Old Testament. Not a Christian, but... Um, Angels from the Old Testament, they're kind of like these spinning discs, and so there were the, the entity that I was interacting with was this disc spinning on a flat plane with another disc at a 90 degree angle to that with this weird alien alphabet written all over it, and that was the entity. And so I asked it first, I said, if, if you're gonna um, help me with the request that I made, can you make me feel this pressure in my forehead right here? And immediately it did it. And so then um, I, I restated the request that I made at the beginning of the ceremony to help remove this block and also to heal this, this emotional wound that I had noticed in a conversation between me and um, Enrica, I think, a few days earlier. And as soon as I made that request, this cherubim disc entity started spinning faster and faster and faster and it dipped into my forehead and as soon as it did, all of the visions were tainted this like sludgy black and with a, with a little bit of white in it and and the general um i don't like this word but the general vibe from that entity just kind of it got like uh toxic maybe is a way to put it like it, it the impression that i got was that this entity had somehow absorbed some sort of <coughs> crap inside of me that needed to come out 
And um, ever since that ceremony, I mean, ever since that particular part of the experience, but um, especially the next day and beyond up until now, I have felt incredible. And um, it's not only helped lubricate those social gears and make interacting with people easier, but also um, the, the cravings that I've had for, for heroin are just minimal. It's, it's incredible. Didn't you say something about the entity pulling the disc out and throwing it into the jungle and then you heard it run around or something? Um, like that? So that was a, a different experience. Oh. Um, a few nights before that, yeah. Um, there... Um, you said the, the block it, or yeah, something it, was a... So like the entity itself was the, the toxic crap coming out. So uh. I was I was sitting up on my knees and the, these things, it looked like... Um, like jism colored webs that would shoot out of the the darkness in front of me like like spider-man would shoot out um, a spider web and they would shoot into me and latch onto me and they would like be pulling themselves out into this weird white lump um that just kind of levitated in front of me and this lump began to fold itself over and over like uh, kind of like when a candy maker you see them making toffee and they're rolling the sugar like this and then this thing that it didn't really appear so much like a like a DMT entity like you would expect but it it felt like it was the, the embodiment of some kind of crap inside of me that needed to come out and so after pulling itself out this it flew itself uh, through itself off into the jungle and as it did that I heard a crash in the leaves down there and um, there uh, um, for most of the ceremony after that, there was something messing around down there that I could hear. And then the same thing happened one or two nights later, except it wasn't this these white spider webs. It was this um, gross black tarry mass that was like felt like it was being scooped out of my abdomen and then also tossed in the jungle and literally making noises when it went down there. Yeah, pretty wild, uh, pretty wild stuff. The important thing is that it seems to have worked, uh, which is amazing. You know, this has been a huge problem for Eric for a long time, not being able to do a lot of the things that normal people do. And uh, there seems to be a very distinct possibility that that's over with. Um, so, you know, if you have epilepsy or know someone that does, you might want to consider ayahuasca or, you know, these other um, teas uh, that I can walk you through. Uh, I have affiliate links that you can buy all of the ingredients uh, from Waking Herbs. And uh, so we can set you up with everything but the psilocybin. You're on your own there. You got to make sure it's legal where you live. So uh, if there's anything else that you'd like to add or does that, have we covered um, our bases? Uh, oh, I quit smoking too. From oh Alaska. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So did, was that easy? Um, relatively compared to every single time I've tried before, yeah, I, I, I've probably craved cigarettes more than I've craved heroin or meth since I've been here, but, um, yeah, it's, another, another thing that has made it easy is being in a completely different environment from what I'm accustomed to back in Oregon, United States. Um, and another thing is, uh, as part of the ayahuasca ceremonies, we snort this, like, liquid tobacco it's mapacho tobacco that's been cooked with water and you snort that and so that has really helped to um delay the nicotine withdrawals while getting over the oral fixation of putting a, something burning like that in your mouth and so i mean i'm definitely not through with the process of quitting smoking but and then there's also the support from a very clean diet. Um, it's all yeah, really healthy food, food the here. The food that um, Enrica makes here is just incredible. It's so healthy. And I, yeah, I've, one thing that's changed about me is that while I'm down here, I've made a resolution to, um, like, when I go to the store to buy something to snack on in between meals, it's no longer going to be potato chips or, or Hot Pockets. It's going to be things like yogurt or... Uh, apples or perhaps some avocados um but yeah i've also uh um and a lot of this i think is to blame on on the drugs but <clears throat> um i have a lot of like crafting and art projects that i work on at home and i'm really into woodworking but um one of the parts of my personality that i've always just detested is that i'll, I'll start a project or i have a fantastic idea or at least what i consider to be a fantastic idea 
and I'll go gung-ho on it for a few weeks and then I'll just lose interest and lose my motivation to work on it. But um, starting about two weeks into this retreat, I've just had this incredible urge to pick up these projects that I had largely abandoned. And um, yeah, I'm actually really excited to go home and work on some of that stuff. So there you have it, you guys. I mean, pretty amazing stories. I hesitate almost to tell these stories sometimes. It helps to have Eric willing to come on here, and I thank you for that, uh, sharing this stuff, because it sounds so over the top and unrealistic to say that, you know, a few weeks or a month with these plants can do something like this for you. Can cure seizures, yeah. But, you know, like you've heard what Eric's saying, it's not just, you know, it's not just the seizures, it's not just the drug addiction, but you know, he's convicted to have a better diet and be more creative and he has more motivation. And so the idea with the plant medicine and the teas and just the general processes that we're supporting a holistic transformation. And that's exactly what Eric just described. So, um, you know, it's a great honor to be able to provide the service for people. And we do still have a few spots open for July and November. So um, if you guys are interested, you can send an email uh, to jungle gnosis at proton.me which will be in the description of this video we thank you so much for watching please hit the like button share subscribe support us on patreon where you can access secret streams um, or there are ways to support us in the description through zell and paypal and cryptocurrency and all that sort of stuff so yeah for anyone interested in any kind of hermeticism harley actually has a copy of uh, what's the name of the book? Uh, Morals and Dogma. Oh, yeah. Um, which he uh, reads parts of and explains them on a pretty regular basis. And it's <laughs> it's definitely worth the $11.11 .11 a month. <laughs> yeah, $11.11 .11 a month. I should actually uh, change that $10 to $11.11 .11 a month. Um, and it's uh, technically it's a book of Freemasonry, so there's a lot more to it than just Hermeticism. But all of this stuff does kind of fall under the heading of... Um, the secret doctrine and the Western mysteries. So, um, yeah, I, everyone seems to really like the secret streams. Uh, we don't really lose people, uh, once they join and you have access to the whole back catalog of everything. So there's also the Kabbalion an audiobook of the Kabbalion with commentary and, um, and, uh, explanations on the LBRP and the middle pillar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, ritual magic instruction. That's not on my main channel. So thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. Thank you, Eric, thank for you. being willing to come on and talk about all this stuff. And, uh, we'll see you in the next video or here in Ecuador in the jungle at the retreat.